All right. Hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Leila Entizam, who is up in Orange County. How are you doing, Leila? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Yeah, and I'm not too far away down here in San Diego. So we're both in California today, which is nice. And and um, Leila, you're uh, you came to uh, you came to the states from Iran, and you you, know, you did a business degree. You got involved in business, but then you decided you wanted to add another dimension. So you did a psychology degree, and you became a licensed therapist. And so you you added all these components together, and now you you help uh, people and organizations, you know, engage with customers and sales in a more effective way. And today. <laughs> We wanted to talk about emotional intelligence, uh, engaging with customers with real authenticity. So well, when you say that, what do you mean by engaging with real authenticity? So ultimately, in any dynamic, emotions are what creates action. So whether it's a sales relationship, whether it's a personal relationship, that authenticity comes from emotionally engaging with people. And so it's what emotions do you create, either through your product, either through your language, either through your intention. And are those emotions that you create really in alignment with what you're trying to do? And so, uh, okay, so uh, talk a bit about how you can recognize whether they're in alignment or whether they're misaligned. Well, I think... The backbone of it starts with leadership. And so the leadership of an organization and the feelings that teams have about their organization, because those are what comes through in the sales dynamic is you, you project out how is it you're feeling about your team, your organization, your mission, your values, what they stand behind, the product you're selling, the service you're selling. So the more deeply those feelings sort of permeate, the more effective you are in, in connecting with your clients. So if you're in an organization which has great positive leadership, great teamwork, you really believe in your product, all of that, and you really believe that you can help people and that your product really helps people or service or whatever it is, that will come through in your engagement and vice versa if you're in, in, from a dysfunctional organization and maybe you don't really believe in what you're doing, that will also come through and people, people will pick up on that. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're in the, if you're in the latter category, right, how, how does an organization reorient itself so it can start to put out a much more kind of positive energy, if you like, towards customers? So I would start by cleaning house internally. And by cleaning house, I mean, how do we recalibrate and, and sort of get realigned to a direction as an organization and as a team and get right within ourselves first, our mission, our values, our, our, our core, uh, how we relate to each other, how we stand up for each other, uh, and then extend that to the, our product or service and then extend that out to our customer. Yeah. And, and then the, the idea of emotional intelligence itself, right? It's not something that some people naturally have a high degree of, right? It's something that sometimes has to be developed. Uh, so how do you help people get a little bit more self-awareness and, and increase their um, EQ, if you like? So the beautiful thing is that it's something we're all capable of. So mm -hmm. no one's excluded from being able to grow their emotional intelligence. And so the how to do that is emotional intelligence is awareness of self and mm -hmm. other. But I have to start with awareness of myself before I can grow my awareness of others. And so things you can do to grow your awareness of yourself are things like journaling, um, self-reflection work, meditation, uh, creative outlets, uh, things that allow you to continue to be more in tune with yourself. Uh, physical sensations and feelings are the way your body communicates information to you. So, so growing your awareness of things like that um, are some of the tools that you can use. Yeah, and it's interesting because um, unfortunately, a lot of that, uh, what you're saying, 
kind of runs counter to the pervasive culture we live in today where people, everything is reactive, everything is fast. There's, people aren't uh, really in, encouraged by, as I said, the pervasive culture to be self-reflective, to take time out, to even do things like journaling. I mean, God forbid that would mean people like to actually write or do something, you know, <laughs> rather than text a couple of things to themselves. So you really have to make a conscious effort to, if you like, uh, swim against the tide a little bit to develop your emotional intelligence. You really have to what? I'm sorry? I said you really have to kind of swim against the tide a little bit you know, and actually go against and say, no, actually, I really need to take time out here. I need to step back from this crazy, reactive, instantaneous culture. Right. Right. But I do think that increasingly it is becoming um, maybe not mainstream yet, but but uh, common to do some of those things. And the beauty is that the more you do it, the more automatic it becomes, the more the less it becomes about sort of stepping out. And, it, and, and you're able to get to a place where it is more more norm for you and automatic for you. So it's, a, it's I think it's the gift of it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I agree. It's just I I think the the self awareness piece is so critical, but it's so it's so difficult because it's not. Uh, I honestly have found that it is the thing that holds people back the most is lack of self awareness, and it's a difficult journey that you have to take to get to self awareness, but it's a hugely re rewarding one. Absolutely. Uh, and so, and and so, as you said, I mean, you gave some tips on things you can do. Uh, you know, how can uh, in an organization? This is one of the things that I I always found difficult early on in my management career is when you don't have when people who are working for you maybe are not self aware. How how you can guide them there without them becoming you know defensive. So the biggest thing I would say is modeling the behavior. So I always tell people that uh, organizations, I believe in the, the sort of the notion that they really just follow family dynamics. Um, and so like parenting, where you model the behavior mm -hmm. that creates a lot more impact in terms of um, uh, you know, rather than telling you what to do, let me show you what to do. And also the consistency of the fact that I then am not just telling you, but I'm also doing it myself. And the thing about um, emotional awareness is that you have to stay in practice. It's like when you go to the gym to keep your body healthy, you have to stay in practice of this, uh, of this work to keep your mind and your spirit and your emotions healthy. And so you're consistently having to model that behavior. Yeah, and I think that's a fantastic point there about the consistency of modeling, because uh, as you say, it doesn't matter what we do in our lives, right? It's very easy for us to let the fundamentals slip if we don't practice them on a regular basis. And then we even kind of fool ourselves to think, well, I'm so good at this stage, I don't need to, you know, I don't Absolutely. need to practice anymore. <laughs> Oh my God. I tell people all the time. I, I do, you know, talks all over the country and I tell people that this is, I'm in this work and yet it is still regularly work for me to practice and stay in, in attunement. It's not just oh, because I do the work, it, it sort of just happens. It, it's, it doesn't, yeah. Life is so busy and it takes over and schedules. It's so easy to go back to some defaults of, of not staying um, in tune with yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think so. I think there, there's a great, uh, something that we have to remind ourselves to do on a daily basis. Like I say to people nowadays is like, be careful of how you start your day, right? Is oh what, inputs, what inputs do you put into your day, right? Do you start, for instance, I mean, do you start with the news, right? Uh, and it doesn't matter where you sit on the political spectrum. You you find the news. You find the news, and the news is there to provoke you. It's not there to inform you. So not a great start to your day because you're probably going to be get annoyed by what you. Hear. Social media also you can see things. You can get into the comparison culture, and suddenly you're like, oh, my life sucks compared to yours, and all of that. So you have to be really careful what you what input you start your day with, right? I tell people a third of your brain is associated to visual processing, and so. Mm -hmm everything you ingest in terms of the material and the content in your social circle and news feeds and, uh, and social media, all of that has a, a fundamental impact on how you navigate your world. Be intentional about what you're feeding yourself, mind, body, and spirit. Be intentional about what you feed yourself because it's the gas you are putting in the engine.
Yeah, I, I love that. I love that uh, concept of being in, intentional about every every aspect of your life, because, yeah, because otherwise, if you're I mean, you could be feeding yourself, you know, food and physically all of that's great, but you mentally you're feeding yourself something toxic. So you're going to be out of balance. Right. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So what are some other um, pieces of advice you have for people how to uh, how to be more authentic? Because I think I think you know, once you have that awareness and all of that, I mean, authenticity should come naturally to you. But people sometimes do slip back behind sort of the mask of um, I'm a seller or, you know, I'm I'm representing an organization and they and it becomes a little bit in conflict. Uh, two, two things I would say. One is celebrating that work as an organization so mm-hmm. that it's something that we are all behind rather than it's something I, as an individual uh, employee, feel like I'm, I'm sponsoring. Uh, And then also back to that intention of who do you keep around you? What's the company you keep within your organization in terms of their mind, body, spirit, so that you are in shared community with with this work? Yeah, actually, that's a. I love that point. That's a great point about being careful what you surround yourself with, because, I mean, we all know, and you know, we're all being probably guilty of it. Well, I just speak for myself, or guilty of it in the past. I'm not going to co-opt you into my. Guilty of it in the guilty. <laughs> yeah, is is that you know when when you're not in a great space, right? You know, maybe at work things aren't going well or whatever. You go and find the people who are going to say, yeah, you're right. This. Yeah, your manager's terrible or the company's terrible or whatever and you you know gravitate towards that and you have to be careful about as you say what you surround yourself with not just in work but outside work too i mean what are the influences what is the community around you and and Absolutely. are they are they positive influences and are you Absolutely. a positive influence Right. And it's it's one brain, one database. It's not a work brain and a home brain and a a personal brain. So that one database comes online in all parts of your life. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a and and it's funny because that is the one thing that I always even to this day that I find strange. It's like uh, we will be say you're in say you're in sales or customer service or whatever. When you're outside of your job and you're a consumer, you're a buyer or you're calling up customer service or whatever, you're expecting a certain level of treatment and connection and all of that. But then you walk through the door of your work. And you're on the other side of the table and suddenly you forget it all and you start treating people not exactly not how you'd like to be treated, but how you feel like treated. And it just that that always kind of can, just astounds me about how short sighted we can be. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so the, so part of it is you have to bring that mentality with you all the time, as you say, one brain. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, listen, um, listen, Leila, this has been a great uh, conversation. But before we go, I'd just love you to tell people a little bit more about the work you do and how they can learn more about you. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm a uh, huge on LinkedIn. So you can look me up on LinkedIn. It's L-E-I-L-A-E-N-T-E-Z-A-M. And my website is www.l as in Larry, E as in Edward, Z as in Zebra, A as in Adam, M as in Mary, dot I-T. Like I like India, T like Tom. I have posts and I, all kinds of free resources and articles um, uh, that you're welcome to use. And uh, so I, I look forward to connecting with anyone who wants to chat more. Yeah, listen, this has been great, Leila. And, you know, a really important topic, because I think, uh, uh, as we talked about like pervasive cultures, I think there's a hunger now for people to get back to more, you know, real connections, even in a business sense, you know, to connect, uh, you know, properly with people. And I think uh, the emotional intelligence is a really important part of that and the authenticity. So thank you for talking with us today. Thank uh, you. Look forward to I look forward to seeing you all for another expert interview uh, soon. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. Thank you.